How Stella got her groove back. No, wait, I'm sorry. How Hermes requisitioned his groove back. The other is a 1998 film that this episode is loosely based on. In the sense that Hermes' groove is tied to his passion for efficiency. Faced with demotion, Sweet something of some place. Hermes embarks on a journey that rekindles his bureaucratic mojo. Population 5! Fry also has a little fling with Hermes' even more uptight replacement, who has a kink for all things filthy. Dirty boy! <gasps> Dirty boy! I rank this as one of my favorite episodes in the original run, so let's not waste any more time, for Hermes' sake, and get this video started. Just don't forget to stick around to the end for the vote for best moment. Time makes fools of us all. Welcome to the hip joint. Futurama fans get in free. Now, Nostradamus is credited for predicting many future events. A trillion miles? So it's only natural that he'd predict the coming of one of the greatest cartoons of all time. Shut up and get to the point! Another lesser known prediction of his is you leaving a like on this video. Oh, thou lord! Felix the Cat Trifles with Time is back as our opening cartoon. <laughs> this episode really dives into Hermes' world of bureaucracy with their ranking system, reliance on pneumatic mail tubes, My God! It's from the central bureaucracy! And just like real-world bureaucracies, the majority of what they do being completely pointless. Hermes drops another, Sweet Gorilla of Manila! as he receives a notice of an upcoming inspection. Then we see the trio, and Zoidberg, No matter what it is you're doing tonight, I'm available! as Leela is preparing for a night of poker with her old co-workers. Let the games begin! who we haven't seen since episode one. Why do you always have to say it that way? Even putting out this handy tray of crudités. Can I eat some crudite? Mmm, is this organic? And Zoidberg is exceptionally bad at poker, showing everyone his hand, and pointing out the king of hearts, who is usually seen stabbing himself in the head. It doesn't matter how many human females you have, Bender's on a hot streak. But Bender's luck has him cleaning house. <laughs> Well, luck and some x-ray specs he gets caught using. Oh, my various gods! X-ray specs! Resulting in an epic ass whooping. Oh! oh, my ass! An ass whooping that Hermes discovers the next morning has destroyed his office. Great cow of Moscow! Destroyed it so much that his desk is stuck in the ceiling. Ah! It was ghosts! Big ones! This is where we meet Morgan Proctor, with SNL alumni Nora Dunn lending her voice to this stamp-happy skank. Enough friendly banter. But Hermes' inspection isn't looking too good. Luckily, he has a plan. I'm going to jump! During this plan, the professor doing his best to talk him out of it. Use another method that won't damage your liver. Other people need it, you know. Bender drops a line that probably gets quoted more than any other, at least by me. I'M GOING TO JUMP! No! Oh, DO A FLIP! This little stunt... Sweet something of some place... ...puts Hermes on paid vacation. The ultimate penalty. So Zoidberg suggests Spa 5. Only because he receives a little kickback for every patient he sends. Hermes will relax and Zoidberg will eat! Hurrah! Morgan takes over as the Planet Express bureaucrat and wastes no time in scolding everyone like Leela for her lack of olive preparedness. You really think you can explain how you left port without a full complement of olives? And we get the first mention of the ship's autopilot. I would have had him this time, but we ran out of olives. She even performs a locker check with a high level of anality, judging Leela on her inability to zipper her jacket. Why isn't this jacket in alphabetical order? What? Bender for keeping his personal items at work. Hey, sometimes a guy gets lonely. And then Fry's locker. This is the other fries locker. I'm fried with a PH. Which is about as gut-wrenching as possible. Full of cans and what I assume is old slurm. This red shirt we've never seen Fry wear, despite it being dirty and wrinkled. And also this hat, which holds the first vote for best moment. Why is there yogurt in this cap? Uh, see, it used to be milk and, well, time makes fools of us all. After discovering Fry's locker, we learn of Morgan's bizarre attraction to all things filthy. Nothing kinkier to me than a filthy slop jock like you. Oh, stop. 
Fortunately for Fry, in his hygiene-optional lifestyle, My toilet broke, and I just went straight in the garbage can. Ah! She literally throws herself at him, sparking a secret office romance that's almost as dirty as his locker. Almost. Time makes fools of us all. A brief cut to Hermes at Spa 5, which turns out to just be a forced labor camp, where we meet another unfortunate patient of Dr. Zoidberg. Give him one for me too, mate. I don't know why I go to him. Back at the office, Morgan really shakes things up by demoting Leela. Co-pilot? Under who? The autopilot. That drunk? And putting Bender in charge of the professor. That's a full-time job. Fry, however, gets a promotion, even landing himself a fancy new office, formerly the mop closet. While Fry kicks back, everyone else is tired of Morgan's antics. Now I tell you she's risking my friendship with her. Most notably Bender whose retelling of his walk with the professor is going into the vote. Some old lady says I stole her purse. I chucked the professor at her, but she kept coming. So I had to hit her with this purse I found. That night, Morgan visits Fry's apartment after a skunk reminds her of his arousing filth. Repulsive. This late night coitus lasts a while as Bender returns from flushing the professor's earwax with a little gift for Fry and catches them in the act. <gasps> what the f Which throws his robot brain into a loop. For I was blind, but now I see. Eventually threatening to expose their affair. Well, let me explain. You were having sex with you. But only to fuel his desire of being Gossip King. You'll never guess who saw Fry and Morgan doing it. And they'll say, who, Bender, who? To keep him quiet, Morgan downloads Bender's brain onto a floppy disk. I am Bender, please insert girder. And sends it to the central bureaucracy. And my final vote for best moment goes to Fry attempting to stop her. But Bender need brain for smart making. What did you do now? Stop doing things. He was a bad robot. No, he was a bad friend. I want him back right now. Fry comes clean about his affair with Morgan. And I loved her because of the part of me that's desperate. So, the rest of the crew decide to set off for the central bureaucracy to save Bender, with another moment of the professor's insanity, as he mentions knowing someone who went mad trying to get in, only for us to realize he is that someone. I've been there lots of times. <laughs> and this is our first glimpse inside the world of the bureaucrats and the web of red tape they force people to traverse. Don't quote me, regulations! Like this withered old man, still in line for his birth certificate. Oh, great. Someone had a baby. Leela is somehow able to bypass this system by tricking this guy, who I feel might be getting demoted soon. He didn't even attempt to check for paperwork. <laughs> Looks like we've got a new office cut up. Inside, they discover the maze that is bureaucracy. No! Passing by this beholder from Dungeons & Dragons, Please don't tell my supervisor I was sleeping. But Leela decides to use her wrist low jackometer to find the master in pile. Hot, 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 hot. But when they find the master in pile, they are met with a crushing defeat. I am Bender. Please insert girder. And Morgan. And I did know. And that's why I came here. Who is still unwilling to help find Bender's disc. Even though her and Fry's affair has been revealed. Just when all hope seems lost, Hermes triumphantly swoops in. Damn it, Hermes! Just jump already! Stop hogging that healthy liver! After bureaucratizing the hell out of that labor camp. Hey, I like the way you think. So now, all the labor is done by that one Australian man. Poor bloke. Oh, oh Lord! This is where Mr. 1.0 makes his entrance coming to a screeching halt, even though he's in a hovering biplane desk thing. Quest for explanation of incident meaning. He gives Hermes a seemingly impossible task, an emergency sort and file in only four minutes. Closing time, 1 p.m. A beat is requisitioned, and Hermes breaks into song, only our second musical number since Hell is Other Robots. And another absolute banger. No, that's what Almighty Jamie does. But I am curious, does he always have this shirt on, 
just in case he needs to break into song. They say we're anal compulsive and weird. Or was this just a one-time thing? As Hermes finishes his monumental task and rescues Bender, I'm Bender, baby, please insert liquor. He also has the opportunity to school Morgan on a little mistake she made in her early days. You only stamped it four times. <gasps> getting him his job back. That's severely reduced pay, of course. As he rides off into the sunset, we're left to reflect on his journey of losing his mojo for the mundane. I'm going to jump! Only regaining it when he realizes his love for the form-filling, paper-pushing world of bureaucracy. Damn, I've said that word way more times in this script than I ever have in real life. My god, it's from the central bureaucracy! Through the tedious T-crossing and limboing under red tape, Hermes digs down and finds what truly makes him happy. All perfectly portrayed in his Jamaican-themed song. Won't be all obsessive and snotty. Zoidberg tries to end the episode with a song of his own. There was a tidal wave, but is abruptly cut short. Uh. Just don't cut this video short, because we still need to get the vote in for best moment. No! Is it Fry's little science experiment? Why is there yogurt in this cap? Uh, I can explain that. Uh, see, it used to be milk and, well, time makes fools of us all. Bender's tough time walking the professor. There we were in the park when suddenly some old lady says I stole her purse. I chucked the professor at her, but she kept coming. So I had to hit her with this purse I found. Or Fry's comment on Bender's friendship. No, he was a bad friend. Get that vote in now or comment your favorite moment down below. Like and subscribe and get ready for the introduction of Qbert in A Clone of My Own. You've never seen a genius as wiener before? No. Never. Well, once in the park.